Is it a good idea to purchase the MSI Shadow 2 XOC version of the RTX 5050? Is it cool and quiet or hot and loud? Let's find out. This is how this graphics card comes new from a store. It is not wrapped, not sealed in any way. Just a normal box. Let's open it up. Oh, there we go. Eco-friendly packaging. And there isn't much in terms of accessories. There aren't any. Just the documentation and a quick start guide. The usual stuff. The anti-static bag is sealed with a piece of tape. And here is the graphics card. The Shadow 2X is the cheapest model in the lineup. Let's peel this off. Is there a pull tab for the top one? Yes, here it is. And for the top one there is no pull tab, but there are plenty of places where I can just peel it from. At the front there are two fans and a plastic shroud. That feels a bit cheap, but what do you expect? This is supposed to be a cost-effective graphics card that costs cheap and performs well. Unfortunately, the backplate is plastic too, made from exactly the same material. That isn't good, because uh, plastic traps heat, and the heat will accumulate over here, behind the GPU, as well as behind the memory modules. It would have been better if there was no backplate at all. Of course, that is from a purely functional point of view. From a point of view of aesthetics, this actually looks okay. Better than without any backplate, because uh, bare PCBs, they don't always look good. In terms of display connectivity, we get one HDMI and three display ports. So that is quite generous. Four displays in total. And these are the latest and greatest HDMI 2.1 and DisplayPort 2.1 connections. This graphics card is powered via a single 8-pin connector. This is a 130-watt graphics card. MSI recommends to pair it with the 550-watt power supply. Out of the box, the PCIe connector comes protected with this cover. Let's open it up and take a look at it. Here it is. Now let's measure it. The length is 197 millimeters. And how tall is it? 120. And it takes up exactly two slots. This is a compact graphics card. In terms of cooling, there isn't much to get excited about, but this is a 130 watt graphics card, so it doesn't really need a lot of cooling. It has just a single heat pipe that stretches all the way through here, pierces through the heatsink here, and then the same pipe comes out at the top, pierces through the heatsink on this side as well. And there is uh, like a massive aluminum slab over there, cooling the VRAM modules, that's the memory, 
as well as parts of the GPU. Surprisingly, the power delivery system has some active cooling as well. There it is, right there. You see it? And at the top as well, it is connected to the heatsink directly. Here is what it looks like inside of a PC. Thanks to its color theme, I think it will work really well in pretty much any build. Furthermore, it's a very compact graphics card. It's way shorter than the micro ATX motherboard used in this PC. In terms of performance, the RTX 5050 isn't going to blow you away, but it's a capable card for its class. It can handle most modern AAA games at native 1080p with acceptable frame rates. That said, you'll often need to lower certain graphics settings or rely on DLSS upscaling to achieve a stable 60 plus FPS in more GPU demanding titles. What surprised me most is its 1440p performance. Thanks to DLSS, I was able to enjoy recent games at reasonably high settings, and I actually prefer using this card with a 27-inch 1440p monitor over 1080p. On the plus side, several memory-heavy titles have received updates, and they now run more smoothly within the 8GB limit at both 1440p as well as 1080p. Of course, some settings adjustments are still needed to stay above 60 FPS, but at least these games are now playable on just 8 GB of memory. As for 4K gaming, the RTX 5050 clearly isn't built for it. Still, with DLSS set to ultra performance, many titles can reach or at least come close to 60 FPS. The bigger issue at this resolution is the 8 GB of VRAM on this graphics card, which quickly becomes a bottleneck in memory hungry scenarios. This often forced me to spend extra time tweaking graphics settings to reduce memory usage in more demanding games. I've published several videos on my channel showcasing the real gaming experience with the RTX 5050 at different resolutions. Check them out at the links in the description below to learn more. Now let's take a look at how the MSI Shadow 2X behaves under full load during gaming sessions. In a room with a temperature of 26 degrees Celsius. Yes, it's still summertime, so yeah, without aircon, it's getting a little bit toasty. That's 79 Fahrenheit for my American friends. Let's take a look at this, shall we? The GPU draws up to 130 watts of power. Normally it sits at 110 to 130. I would say that's the range that I've seen during my time with the RTX 5050. As you can see, the GPU is fully loaded. The temperature is hovering at around 70 to 71 degrees Celsius. The GPU core clock is boosting to 2820 megahertz. VRAM hotspot is at 70 degrees. The GPU fan is spinning at 52% of its capacity and that is just above 1900 RPM. Let's take a listen if this graphics card is noisy using this wireless microphone. In my opinion, this is quite enough, because I couldn't hear the GPU fans over the fans that are spinning in this system. And this is a big quiet system equipped with premium quality fans that are low noise. So yeah, that tells us a lot about this graphics card. It is actually quite good. That is something that we don't usually expect from a budget-friendly model. Yeah, this is actually a pretty good card. Shadow 2 XOC gets my stamp of approval. If you are interested in this graphics card or any other products featured in this video, then take a look at them in the description below. By the way, this is a Ryzen 5 7600X based PC build and it works quite well. I tested it recently on the channel. If you want to know more, then check out that video at the link in the description below. I think it's a nice combo that offers you a nice upgrade path for the future, 
you can upgrade the CPU to a much faster. Even Zen 6 is going to come out on the same socket, so you can upgrade the CPU. Let me know in the comments below what do you think about this model. And if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, then don't forget to reward my work with a like. It helps out a lot, and I appreciate it. Furthermore, subscribe for more videos like this if you haven't already. It was I, Vadim. Until next time.